Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we have a very rare thing, a thing that didn't exist until about a week ago, and that thing is an AMD AM5 motherboard that doesn't cost more than most mid-range CPUs. ASRock recently let out a quiet squeaker, a $125 US B650 motherboard called the B650M-HDV-M2. Pretty catchy name, M.2, sorry. A pretty catchy name, that one. And unfortunately, if there's anything we know about ASRock motherboards, it's that their HDV series is complete trash. At least that's been the case for the last few models that we've checked out. So will this B650 version be any different? Well, we bought one to find out. But before we do, today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly and their new 12th gen CPU contact frame by Debauer. It's well known that the integrated loading mechanism or ILM of the LJ1700 sockets bends 12th gen CPUs, leading to an uneven contact surface that reduces cooling performance. Solving this issue, the contact frame replaces the ILM, allowing for a much more even contact with the CPU's IHS and the base of your cooler, which in turn reduces operating temperatures. Installation's quick and easy, and thanks to the use of anodized aluminium, the contact frame is non-conductive. And then for those of you who wish to further maximize contact, Thermal Grizzly now offers an optional lapping tool. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. Okay, so prior to the release of this more affordable ASRock B650 motherboard, the cheapest offering from them was the B650 MPG Riptide at $170 US. And it's actually quite a solid board, but at $170, it's also very expensive as an entry point. Gigabyte did manage to undercut ASRock with the excellent B650M DS3H at $160, and I guess that didn't sit well with ASRock. That said, Gigabyte's also quietly let out the B650MK, and that's also targeting the $125 US price point. And I have ordered one, so you can expect some coverage in the near future. So with a target price of $125 US, the HDV is, as you might have expected, very much a bare bones motherboard. Still, while you might only be getting two DIMM slots, there's a PCIe 5.0 M.2, along with a second PCIe 4.0 M.2, two PCIe x16 slots, both of which are PCIe 4.0, for a x16 slash x4 configuration. The I.O. is very basic. There's four USB 2 ports, two USB 3.25 gigabits per second type A ports, and a single USB 3.2 5 gigabits per second type C port. There's also a BIOS flashback button, along with 2.5 gigabit LAN using a Realtek controller. So the bare essentials here for sure, there's nothing that fancy. And on board, there's a USB 3.2 10 gigabits per second Type-C header, but that's really as good as it gets. So no 20 gigabits per second or faster USB here. You're also getting just four SATA ports, though that's probably fine on an MATX motherboard. Of course, the key concern here is the VRM as this is traditionally where ASRock's HDV series of motherboards have failed miserably. The good news though being that ASRock lists an 8 plus 2 plus 1 power design for the B650 HDV, so it can't be all that bad, right? Or can it? Now nah, it's probably fine, ASRock is using the Vachet SIC 654 50 amp power stages. They went with a dozen of these power stages on the B650M PG Riptide, and it performed quite well, so I think they'll get away with 8 here, but of course we will be testing that shortly. Meanwhile, the VRM heat sinks, they're not huge, certainly smaller than what we found on the Riptide, so it's going to be really interesting to see how this board handles the Ryzen 9 7950X. And speaking of which, let's get on with that. For testing, I am using the Gigabyte Aorus C500 glass case with the Gigabyte UD1000 GM power supply, and for cooling the Gigabyte Aorus Water Force X360mm AO. And thank you to Gigabyte for providing all of that hardware for our testing. It made the job a bit easier. Then for recording temperatures, I'm using a digital thermometer with K-type thermocouples, and I'll be reporting the rear peak PCB temperature. And finally, I'm not reporting delta T over ambient, so I maintain a room temperature of 21 degrees. And to ensure a constant ambient temperature, a thermocouple is positioned next to the test system. As for the stress test, I am using the Ryzen 9 7950X and for load, Cinebench, which was looped for an hour, at which point I'm reporting the maximum PCB temperature, again recorded using K-type thermocouples. Okay, so out of the box, the HDV has an 85 degree thermal limit for the CPU, which is essentially a power limit, though oddly this limit has been set 10 degrees higher than the one found on the Riptide. 
Thankfully though, in that example, the limit was completely unnecessary as the Riptide's VRM peaked at just 76 degrees with the thermal limit removed. And for those of you unaware, the standard thermal limit or TJ Max, which is set by AMD is 95 degrees for the Zen 4 processors. And this affords the CPU a bit more headroom when it comes to power usage. For those of you wanting to change the configuration for the HDV from 85 degrees to the standard 95 degrees, you merely need to enter the BIOS and change the TJ Max. It's very quick and easy to do so. Now, despite packing four fewer 50 amp power stages and a smaller VRM heatsink than the Riptide, the HDV ran just three degrees hotter at 79 degrees. So just scraping in under 80 degrees there for the peak temperature in our testing, which is certainly an acceptable result. And this means the HDV will be able to handle the 7950X at full power in basically any environment humans can survive without having to strip down to their underwear. So that is very handy. Now, as you'd probably expect with the 85 degree thermal limit in place, the HDV is slightly slower than it would be otherwise in the Cinebench R23 multi-core test. With the out of the box power limit removed though, the score was boosted by a mere 3%, and now the 7950X is performing as expected. It's really a trivial difference, and I'm not really sure why ASRock keeps releasing boards that can run at full power with an artificial limit. That said, it's really not a big deal as I've said, given how close the performance is anyway. Just a bit of an odd choice there. Interestingly, the thermal limit did slightly reduce single core performance, though we're only looking at a single percentage difference for this workload. And this means for lightly threaded games, there shouldn't be any real difference between the 85 degree thermal limit out of the box configuration and the standard 95 degree configuration. And of course, we did only see a 3% margin in the multi-core test. So again, overall, this really isn't a big deal. As for gaming, the HDV does very well relative to other ASRock, MSI and ASUS boards. With the limits removed, we went from 249 FPS to 251 FPS, which is still well down on the Gigabyte boards due to Gigabyte's more aggressive memory tuning out of the box which results in a 5% boost here. Performance on Watch Dogs Legion is much similar between the various B650 boards. And again, the HDV performed very well, allowing for 155 FPS on average with the power limits removed. Now, this is really interesting. Using our DDR5 6000 CL30 memory with Expo loaded, the HDV took on average just 16 seconds to load Windows 11. And this is from pushing the power button to the system booting up and hitting the Windows desktop, just 16 seconds that took. Interestingly, it was a few seconds slower using the standard out of the box configuration, but overall either configuration was very fast. And I should note that all of the comparative data featured in this video from the previously tested B650 motherboards was done so in many instances using older BIOS revisions that have possibly now been updated. That said, not all the boards have been updated yet, and the HDV is still using a GSA 1.0.0.5C, but MSI, for example, has now updated their B650 range and are claiming improved boot time. So that's something that I'll have to retest when I get time. But even so, sub 20 second load times here for the HDV is incredible. So much so that I ended up recording a little video and posted it to Twitter when I first discovered just how fast this thing could load into Windows 11 from hitting the power button. And I should just note that it might not be this fast with every memory kit on the qualified vendor list as it was with our G-Skill DDR5 6000 memory. But even so, this result is unlike anything we've seen previously from an AM5 motherboard using this exact memory kit. So I do wonder just how much the dual memory DIMM design helps with this. So there you have it, an ASRock HDV motherboard that's actually really good. What a time to be alive. Maybe it's all our past content that help led here. Can we take full credit for it? I'm going to take full credit for it. I think the only slight bit of disappointing news here, as this board was suggested to be a $125 US motherboard, so that was the, I believe, the target price, $125 US, but at present, it's selling for more like $140 US. Could just be an early introductory price, not sure on that one, but it is still around $20 US less than the Gigabyte B650M DS3H. Still, that's quite an improvement on price, and they are similar equipped boards. The Gigabyte B650 MDS3H does offer greater flexibility when it comes to memory expansion, but with the HDV, you are getting extra stuff like PCIe 5.0 to one of the M.2s, a better PCIe configuration. So I'd say the $20 discount does make the ASRock model the more attractive option. Having said all of that though, Gigabyte's B650MK can be had for $130 right now, which is $10 less than the HDV, so I'm keen to check that one out. As for which Zen 4 processor makes sense to pair with ASRock's new ultra-affordable HDV, well, anything will work just fine as we saw, 
But I imagine those focusing on productivity and therefore opting for a 12 or 16 core Ryzen 9 part, this board's probably not going to be all that appealing to you. You'll likely want better PCIe M.2 and USB support. Many $200 plus AM5 boards will be more attractive. Rather, I see the HDV being a great board for gamers, something to pair with the $230 US Ryzen 5 7600, while also having the option to upgrade in the future, in the comfort of knowing that the board can handle 170 watt Ryzen processors with ease, and with multiple years of support promised, you should have a strong upgrade path ahead of you. It's probably also not a bad value board for the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D, which will be released shortly. Though I'd probably suggest going for one of the AM5 boards priced closer to $200 if you're going to spend $450 US on your CPU. The extra $60 or so buys you some nicer features that should see the platform age a bit better. Whatever the case, it's good to see the ASRock B650M-HDV slash M.2 works well with no VRM concerns to speak of. So a big thank you to our Patreon slash Floatplane dot M.2 members for enabling us to buy this hardware. Uh, ASRock were sending us a board. Uh, initially, I did ask them for a board when this thing was first announced, and they told us we, they didn't have samples and they didn't know if they could provide a board, which usually means this thing's low end and not particularly good, and therefore we don't want to promote it, which thankfully wasn't the case this time. Anyway, to ASRock, to their credit, they did get back to me about a week ago, and so we have samples now and we're sending a board out. That board hasn't arrived yet. So I purchased this one about a week before uh, they told me they could get us a board. So we were able to get this board a bit earlier, do the video. And yeah, so big thank you to the people who support the channel because it meant we were able to get this content at least out to you a bit sooner. And we were able to review a retail sample for whatever that's worth. But yeah, also thanks to ASRock for, for sending us a board. So it, we'll have two of these now. So I guess I can test the uh, review sample as well and see how it compares to the retail board. But anyway, good stuff there. If you would like to become a Floatplane or Patreon member and support the channel directly and get some cool perks in return. Floatplane, Patreon, links in the video description. You get access to monthly live stream with Tim and myself, behind the scenes content, Q and A's, and of course our exclusive Discord server, which is an awesome place to hang out and talk tech. But if you're not interested in any of that, that is perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. See you next time.